right. Reef. <clears throat> the cameras save us from drowning or becoming a meal as they borrow our eyes to conceive a world whose strangeness we've come to need. Swayed rock that nibbles and mates, claws and coils whirling to hunger's tune. Beauty is Andro Andromeda's work, chained to taut patience, whose only promise is a dawning grumble. Blessed are the colorful, for they are poisonous. Blessed the dark, for they have learned to count. <laughs> Blessed the callous, for they have armored virtue. <clears throat> Blessed the crafty, for they learn alone. Blessed the camouflage, for only they know themselves. Blessed are the bioluminescent, for they rhythm emptiness. Blessed the innumerable besieged, for their fear feeds throngs. Blessed the brimming pools, which turn the ocean into a word. Standing over them, we lock reduction into our view of self. Contained, the held bright myriad, whose torments clear and urchins jewel, rise unbroken and unshelled. Woo! <laughs> okay, this poem, I'm going to talk a little bit about it, so you sure. can do the do the do Okay. <laughs> it's our code. Do the do the. Good. Good. This poem is called Abacus. And it's and it's it was a subtitle Havana, 1933, the year that Gerardo Machado was toppled. 1954, when I was born, which of course is five years before the communist takeover. And Miami, 2002. The poem is dedicated to Nicolás Quintana, whom I call the last of the Cubans. He was a great architect, a very dear friend, and a great inspiration for cultural continuity in Miami which unfortunately is more often lacking than present. So the poem shifts between all these scenes, and at the end I imagine myself, had I been, as I often did, Nicolás, a man who enjoyed the Havana of the 1950s as a grown-up, a man who, who walked the streets of a glorious place. And um, so here we go, Abacus. It has an epigram from Kierkegaard. Melancholy is a sin, for not to will deeply and sincerely is sin. And this is the mother of all sins. Soren Kierkegaard. Suave. <laughs> <laughs> They were dancing on the roof of the house next door, flames leaping from the windows in the calm metronome of a danson. Or maybe the mob were clicking their heels savagely, not therefore a dance properly, but a sudden shaping of flesh to the clay of vengeful joy. A boy of eight is straying the opulent streets to amaze at the inkness of blood on pavement, how it oils the asphalt into mat provinces the body has seized, imperial of just dead space, as it quietly fell, broke and rag turned. The boy had never heard such silence on the street. Nicolás Quintana is writing his memoirs. He built some of Cuba's vanguard homes and buildings later. Decades between this ancient day Machado fell, when Nicolás, then a boy, saw the swarm waltz on the neighbor's roof, and he pondered their arms curving and legs jerking straight, bodies spun as if they caught 
or were still trying to net the incomparable fish of history, he knew he'd always fall for the narrow joys. After his tale in my living room, 68 years after the dance, I dreamt I had been a man the year of my birth, 48 years ago, and chaos fired up the schooner wind, whipping waves, slamming the keel against surf. My new woman on deck, sunglassed, trim and linen, filling with liquor. She might be the muse of history, she of the Italian scarf, flitting in the acetylene wind of the Gulf Stream. We'd be heading back to port in Havana to more rum and the climax of air conditioning. But now she reclined like a tongue between the lip of clouds and the jaw of cushions and tasted the blood metallic sea spray on her face. Havana sparkled behind her in late 50s summer, gleamed like a trumpet just polished. Her turboprop for New York leaves in the morning. A decade from now, it will be too late to live and too soon to remember.